Welcome back to the JPEG Podcast. I'm Greg. Jerry's not here. I'm just Greg. I'm doing it solo. Give it a shot. See how it goes. I don't know. I like to bang, bang, bounce stuff off. You know, my buddy. So we'll see. This might be a short one. It might be a fast one. But didn't want to leave a gap. You know, for the loyal listeners out there. Um, this is episode thirty-seven. June 7th, 2018. What up? Um, got a lot to talk about today. Uh, I'm just going to run through quickly what I'm looking at and then we'll get it more in depth later. Um, so, I don't know if you've heard, but Amazon has purchased the rights to produce a new Lord of the Rings series on their Prime subscription model. Um... It's going to be five seasons and supposedly going to cost one billion with a B to produce. So I don't know if that covers all the flights to New Zealand or what, but it's supposed to be very high production values. Um, it looks like it's going to be centered around the story of Aragorn. Aragorn. I hate that name. It looks like it should start with an E. And there's an extra R. Aragorn. Um, we'll just call him Strider. That's a cooler name. Um, but yeah, it's going to be five seasons. And the other day, Peter... Peter. Who did the movies? Peter. I keep wanting to say Peter King, but that's definitely not him. Peter L-O-T-R. Jackson. Wow. Peter Jackson said the other day that he's not attached to the whole project, so sorry for those of you that were hoping, but he's probably Lord of the Ringed out after the original trilogy and then the, the Hobbit trilogy, so we'll see. I'm looking forward to it. I uh, I tried to rewatch the Lord of the Rings trilogy recently, about a year ago, and it was, it was the full unedited versions, and it was a, an ordeal. So I think I'm going to stick to the theatrical cuts moving forward, but I've always appreciated them and I've always loved the production value. It feels, you know, up there with Game of Thrones and stuff like that. So at least we can expect that, if nothing else, you know. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, do you see how I instinctively look to the left from a point man, Jerry? Well, he's not here. Um, speaking of production, a movie is something you produce, right? Right. Um, it was already announced that Top Gun was going to have a, another entry into the series as if it's more than one, but it's just one. So this is a, I guess, a redux or a sequel, but Tom Cruise is already on board, obviously. Um. But now it's come out that Val Kilmer is on board as well, which is cool because, you know, what's, uh, oh my God, what, what was his code name? Maverick. What's Maverick without Iceman? You know, it was the, uh, Fire and Ice, Mario Bowser situation. So one serves the purpose of having the other and without the other, it's not really competitive or was not as much narrative or drama so why would we care but it's pretty cool next summer july tw july 12th is the uh current date for the next movie to come out um we'll see supposedly um the fighter pilots are entangled in a drone driven airspace which has made their flying obsolete joseph kosinski who cruises who worked with Cruise on Oblivion, wonderful movie, directs, and Kilmer portrays Kilmer portrays Iceman, the rival pilot to Cruise's Maverick on the original Tony Scott title. What's also awesome is um, the film's score, the, the soundtrack producer, Harold Faltemeyer, is also coming back, which is really cool because he's had so many iconic songs. Um, from the 80s and early 90s things like Beverly Hills Cop and 
That guy. I know you know that jingle. It's wonderful. I'm glad he's coming back. Um, another fun little factoid about this movie upcoming is, you know, not only did this movie become a part of, like, American society or whatever, pop culture, so did the music. Uh, other than Harold Faltermeyer, there was the Kenny Loggins, you know, Danger Zone song, which is awesome. I love it. Um, and he's going to be coming back as part of that as well. So he um, was speaking to producers and Tom Cruise, and he discussed about how he wants to bring a new take and a, like a refreshed version of the Danger Zone song with while working with like a contemporary artist or something. So that is awesome, and I can't wait to hear that. I love that song. I hope he doesn't butcher it. Change is always a little weird, but especially when that song has been, you know, playing since 1986. It's going to be hard to accept the new version, but, you know, change is inevitable. And things would get static without it, so. Moving into gaming. Game Zone. Um... I saw this in my feed the other day. Um, I'm not a huge Fortnite player or PUBG player, but you know I'm starting to learn more about it, especially with Jerry around. Asus, they have this line of electronics called R ROG or ROG Republic of Gamers. So they have like super high-end laptops, uh, desktop towers, and now they have an Android phone that's part of the ROG line. And it's made, quote unquote, for PUBG and Fortnite because you can play those, um, you know, on your phone. Specifically, Fortnite, I think, is the full client that can play with anybody online or offline. Or, I mean, across platforms. I don't think PUBG, you can do that yet. But it's got all the lines, you know, the aggressive, like, gamer, plastic, case, things like that. But... It's got the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset, and they've overclocked it a little bit from 2.8 to 2.96 gigahertz. I don't, I don't really ever hear too much of overclocking in um, the mobile arena. It's usually for PCs. Um, There's a six inch 2160 by 1080 AMOLED screen, which supports HDR. Pretty cool, runs at 90 hertz. Smooth, smooth. One millisecond response rate. Can't get much faster than that. Um, let's see. Y gig connectivity, 802.11 AD. I guess it's the step beyond AC. So that's fast. Um, it mirrors your, it can mirror your gameplay to a nearby TV versus Asus via Asus's YGIG dock. So long as your handset is a direct line of sight to the receiver. Pretty cool. Kind of like, um, brings to mind Switch, you know? You got the dock for it, or you can play it mobile. Um, it looks like there's gonna be eight gigs of RAM on this thing, which is insane. Because when I built a tower, like my last gaming PC, I think it was probably 2010, dating myself here. But I had six gigs of RAM in that, and I thought it was plenty. So it's, it's weird to see a phone having more RAM than that. Um, there's a pair of front-facing speakers, which is awesome for a phone. I'll try to never go back. We'll see to not having that. But It's got the rear fingerprint reader, and... Let us see. I think it has the squeeze functionality that like the HTC had where you can uh, map a gesture or a, a, not a gesture, but a opening an app or calling somebody by squeezing the phone. You know, you can set it to what you want. Um, it has three USB-C ports on the phone, which is insane. No, I mean, I'm, I haven't even seen two on one phone, but this is, I guess, meant to be really, like, a portable mid-range gaming PC, honestly, because 
that's where you would plug in your keyboard and mouse and all that stuff. So keyboard, mouse, and then charging, you know. Um, let me see. Yeah, I mean, the one last thing about this thing that's awesome is that they are, Asus is throwing in an aeroactive cooler that clips onto the phone's curved glass back. This plugs into the conjoined USB-C ports on its fan to power its fan and the RGB logo so you can show everybody that you're on a ROG phone. Um, that's insane. That's pretty intense. You get you get a, an external fan to you know dissipate the heat from the phone because it's got eight freaking gigs of RAM in it and it's overclocked and playing games. So you're gonna need that. Um, in addition to that, there is a couple of um, again very switch-like uh, attachments to either side that you can use to have better controls instead of on-screen controls. And then there's the dock, like we were talking about before. And I'll, I'll be, I'll put pictures up as we go through on this. Um, but that's crazy. Uh, I definitely wouldn't mind touching it and holding it and giving it a shot. Um, I don't know if I'd be ready to carry it around as like a daily driver or not. Um, so this is an interesting story. Um... Apparently, the Xbox One will reportedly soon allow you to use Alexa and Google Assistant on their on the dashboard and on Xbox One. Um, I guess that's kind of them acknowledging Cortana is not really going to take over. I don't know because they 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 use Cortana still for, on like Windows installs and stuff and throughout windows and things like that so i'm i don't know i don't know where where their mind is at with that but i guess they're trying to attract more crowd to using the xbox if they can have more open features and things like that as opposed to sony because sony's winning the you know overall sales that's my hunch but let's see here um looks like there's not much to that story <laughs> don't know what to tell you um, basically they're just saying you know uh, Xbox veteran Albert Pinello recently joined Amazon to quote help figure out how to grow Alexa echo presence in gaming and if this integration goes ahead, it will be yet another major addition to Alexa's growing presence across devices. Microsoft has been working with Amazon to integrate Alexa and Cortana, meaning all Windows 10 PCs will soon have Alexa built into them. That's new to me. I did not know that. I, I got a hand to Amazon. Um, their phone a few years ago failed miserably. Um, but this Alexa, they were... They were the first on the scene for these digital assistants, as far as I can remember. Um, and it's getting pretty popular. It's got a lot of vendor support and they're still chugging along and it looks like they're really expanding into to different fields now. So I gotta give them props for that. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Alexa and Cortana cohabitate the, the same computer and Xbox, I guess, for that matter. Um, I guess you'll have to choose which one you wanna use Otherwise, you'd have two two women answering your your calls, which isn't a horrible thing, I guess. <laughs> Next song. Next song. Um, there is this game that's been out for a little bit called Paladins, and. A lot of people compare it to Overwatch, but it's a little bit different. It's it's still hero based, but you have a lot more customization, as I understand it. Um, you've got a card system where you can choose three, and it boosts certain parts of your gameplay for that round. 
um, whereas you don't have that with Overwatch. But um, what I'm getting at is Paladins is now being uh, released for Switch on June 12th, and it'll have Xbox One crossplay, which is pretty cool. But not PS4, because PS4 doesn't play with others while it's on top. I don't know. I kind of I kind of get that, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to be the bad guy in this situation, but um it's pretty cool. Uh traditionally Paladins is free to play, but you know, if you want to unlock characters sooner or, or faster, then you can go ahead and pay for pay for them and get to them quicker, but you don't have to, which is nice. Um so on Nintendo Switch for on for thirty dollars on June twelfth, you can get the Founders Pack. Um, the free to play version will be available later in the summer. Um, you're gonna get the cross play. The Switch version will help expand the audience. Um, and although the hardware is not as powerful as the competition. The developer high res was saying that it's guaranteed to lock to run it's locked at 60 frames per second so you're not going to miss out on you know headshots and you know quick movement things that are really necessary for these types of games to an xbox player who's got a more powerful machine on his end so pretty cool um i don't really the last game i played that was similar to those kinds was really Team Fortress 2 which was forever ago probably like when it's, ooh let's see here I'm gonna guess 2008 but let's see almost October 2007 um I got the orange box, which had Half-Life 2 and a couple episodes, and Team Fortress 2. And it was awesome. I love Team Fortress 2, but people got too good for me and just kind of stopped getting fun. But that was the last real game I played that was like Overwatch or, I guess, Paladin. So it's not really my thing, but I know it's here to stay along with Battle Royale. So gotta get used to it maybe i'll try it again i don't know it's not really my thing though maybe i'll try it again maybe i'll repeat it maybe i'll repeat what i'm saying twice three times i can't think straight the caps are in the stanley cup final and they might win tonight so um oh this was really cool uh somebody leaked a 10 second footage of the new spyro remaster and it's beautiful. My eyes were welling up with joy. I couldn't restrain my emotions. Um, it's great though. Like I was noticing um, the grass a couple months ago when they were revealing it, the grass was quite yellow looking and I was a little concerned about that, but it's got a nice vibrant green lushness to it and the, the motion is very fluid and you'll see it here. It's really nice looking and really brought back a lot of memories of when I was a kid <laughs> living in a cul-de-sac playing with my friends but it looks awesome and I'm very stoked for it um, I kind of like this tradition of um, remastering and redoing games that I grew up on um, I'm glad people that are my age are in the industry now doing this because I don't know, I feel lucky because people were before me and people are after me and you know, there weren't these kinds of remakes before my era. So nobody remade Mario one, I'm saying those kinds of things. So it's pretty cool. And I hope it continues. Uh, there's a lot of talk about that game medieval on PS one. That would be really cool. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any others. I mean, Final Fantasy VII, I didn't get into, but it is that same era. And that, they, that, 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 they're redoing that one as well. So, 
got that to look forward to. Um, I think they redid Parappa the Rapper, although not too much fanfare as, as these. Um, I'm trying to think of other... If they could do a new Twisted Metal... Somebody mentioned on Reddit the other day, the original Battle Royale game, and it's true. Twisted Metal was awesome. But I don't think it's been able to recapture itself with each subsequent release. So if they really went back to the drawing board with that and, you know, made a foundation of just straight up Twisted Metal, like number one, that might be awesome. That would be really cool, actually. Um, let's see. I guess let me know uh, in the comments below if there are any comments. Uh, what other games you thought or think would make great remakes. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Far Cry series, especially lately. Um, and I got the gold edition of Far Cry 5. So just recently I was able to download the uh, PS4 remake of uh, Far Cry 3, which was what I missed out on that game. Um, and it's always everyone's favorite, especially the villain Voss. So I'm playing through that and it's pretty cool. It still shows its age a little bit, but it's good. It's good. But that just reminded me because we were talking about remasters and stuff. I think it was a, I don't think it was really a remaster. It was more of a optimization for PS4, but you know, you're not going to win them all. What are you going to do? Um, that's about it. Just a quick, quick little news flash today. I've learned that it's tough not to have a, a buddy to bounce things off of. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Hopefully I wasn't too scatterbrained. Um, it's my first solo video. Uh, and, um, yeah, I hope it goes well. Hope you all liked it. And, um, just check it out. Check us out at jpegpodcast.com. Check out our YouTube channel, the JPEG Podcast. Uh, listen to us wherever you listen to your podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, all that. Um, please leave us a like and subscribe. And uh, we'll be back next week with another one. Catch you later.